had a, uh, a manager that moved from Vancouver to Toronto and uh, she was looking for apartments she asked me to come along with her so that she could uh, you know feel a little more safe as she was talking to the uh, apartment manager I had noticed that next to the apartment building was a large mansion and my curiosity got me and I said give us the tour she gave us the tour and she had alluded to the fact that this place had a rather nefarious history but um, she wouldn't go into any detail with me at the time after seeing the place, I fell in love with it, and uh, I moved in in 2001. A big, empty, old mansion. The prime ingredient in a recipe for a horror movie. We all know what happens next. Somebody moves in, and all hell breaks loose. But what if the usual ghostly activity isn't enough to scare off the newcomers? What if the ghost is driven to possess the body of the living to protect its home? Welcome to Ghostly Encounters. I'm Lawrence Chow. Today we'll meet Scott and Lees, and we'll hear their chilling tales of ghostly possession. When Scott McKellen moves into a mansion in Toronto, he thinks he's found the perfect home. And it is, as long as he doesn't mind living without a female partner. I've been told that there was not one person that could have a relationship that lasted in that mansion. You were doomed in a relationship if you were to move into that place. When I had guests come over and they stayed a couple days and they'd never been there before, they wouldn't sleep properly and some wouldn't sleep at all. And I asked them why in the morning. And they had told me that they felt like they were being watched and they felt that it wasn't somebody watching them kindly, but more of in a malicious way, like willing them to go away. And this happened to uh, three of my friends that had come and stayed over the period of eight years uh, at the house just uh, on visits. And they were just friends, not even girlfriends. And uh, they had felt so uneasy that they, uh, they couldn't stay for more than two or three days. There was a groundskeeper in the 30s and 40s that used to actually uh, basically run the outside area of the house, making sure that everything was being done properly and all that. From people that were alive that knew the guy when he was alive said that he was a very sour man and that he uh, had never married and he hated women and he would provoke the women that came onto the lot that were maids he would make their lives miserable when he died I think that this guy because the uh, position that he held felt that that was his house. And so he stayed when he died. Every girl that I had gone out with when I was living in the house uh, was terribly affected by the energy within the house. Two years ago, I had a uh, girlfriend who had uh, come here all the way from Europe. One night when we were going to sleep, was woken up at around three in the morning to my bed shaking. I was woken up at around three in the morning to my bed shaking. I tried to wake her and sit her up properly. She started to bang her back against the bed. 
she had stood up at one point, like in this convulsive state, and had left the bed. And um, she was now going really fast in circles, like a whirling dervish. And I couldn't stop her because she was moving so fast. I was beside myself. I had no idea how to handle this. And she stopped and she started to yell like a banshee. And she would throw her head up and yell at the ceiling. And I mean, like, I've never heard yells like this because it sounded like three or four voices, but they weren't female. They were all men's voices and they were coming out of her body. And she was still convulsing while she was yelling. And her head went back and the back of her head touched the back of her ankles. It was the scariest thing I've ever experienced in my life. All I could do was watch in absolute fear for her. She went to the bathroom, was in there for about five minutes, and then I heard smashing in the bathroom. And I tried to open the door, but she had locked it from the inside. There was more screaming that was not very human. silence I broke down the door she had cut her arm enough to cause some pretty major bleeding and she had started writing the word die in blood on the walls in the bathroom she was calm enough I think that because of her sensitivity and the fact that she was so open to um, energy around her because she was constantly affected by everybody's energy I think that uh, she let whatever it was in thinking that it was not going to harm her and it took advantage of that she went back to Scotland because there was nothing we could do to maintain anything real and happy within that household. I've been gone for a year. I moved out in April of last year. In the past year, not one person has moved into that place. And I uh, don't believe that that place is going to have any tenants for years to come. So, did the devil make her do it? Probably not. Probably not. Most scholars of paranormal phenomena agree that a possessing spirit can't make someone do the things Scott's girlfriend did, unless the person is open to doing them anyway. That doesn't mean his girlfriend wanted to be possessed, but our theological expert Dr. David Reed says it does mean she was sensitive to spirits. Our experts tell us that extreme physical reactions are common in cultures where they're socially acceptable. Falling to the ground, even levitating. These could be normal reactions to a possession that isn't malevolent. But an evil spirit would try to inspire a different response, one that's more violent, more bloody. We've looked at the physical reactions to possession, but what about the mental? Now Lise Sepris, a Canadian living in Hungary, is about to find out. 
that was, we were looking for actually a rental pro a property in the vicinity. We fell in love with the area. It's in the second district of Budapest. We were just looking around in the street to see if there was anything there. And this lady happened to walk out and we decided, well, we'd ask her if she was familiar with anything. She says, no, there's nothing to rent, but there is a place for sale. It may not be really nice, but it is for sale. And that's what started basically our interest in that area. And hence we ended up buying the, the house that everything happened in. There were certain things happening, very strange things. I would hear steps, um, you could hear the hardwood because it was the old hardwood floor. You could hear the steps walking across the hardwood floor. I did feel the fact that it felt weird. There was something like I was being watched all the time, but I couldn't figure out what it, where it was coming from. And you sort of shrug it off and you don't want to believe in it. You could feel eyes bearing down in you. It didn't matter where you were in the room. You could feel that essence. You know what something's there, but you can't physically see it. And it's watching you. It, it was a creepy feeling. My daughter said that one day she saw, she thought it was her sister going into her sister's bedroom. She saw the figure, she saw the shadow. And when she went to look for her sister, she couldn't find her sister. She thought she was playing a trick. In reality, there was nothing there. We were going through very difficult times on the upstairs. I was going through uh, a divorce and I remember that uh, my husband had come home at one particular time and I was in my daughter's bedroom and we were just either getting her ready for bed or something like that. He went to the hallway where we had the closet. He was taking his coat off and as I looked out I could see, uh, well the lights were on, uh, you could see this it was like a smoky, you could see through it, I could see past it, but you could still see it. It was almost like just plopped on his shoulders, and you could see it physically break off from his shoulders, and then, I hate to use the word float, but that's what it did. It sort of floated into the bedroom. I remember putting my arm across my daughter and uh, praying at that point that... There's something so evil and so bad here. I was absolutely horrified that I had seen this. And even though that you couldn't see no eyes or anything, you could sense that it was just bearing into you. I don't know how much time passed by. I ended up falling asleep. And the next day, nothing. Nobody else experienced it except me. I don't know if the kids, they were too small at that point, but uh, my husband didn't experience it. As a matter of fact, he thought that I was a little bit losing it, that I was starting to experience all these weird things. His personality started changing, and I never thought of it until after that. When we were having the difficulties, there was a stream personality change. And there were many times that we didn't talk to each other or we didn't really communicate except if it was because of the children. He was a very calm personality usually, but near uh, about a year and a half to two years, his personality became erratic and violent and very strange. And I had no idea what possessed it. I remember when he stared back at me and it was the most evil look. The word that comes to mind as if you've been possessed and you've got something staring out at you and it's so evil it penetrates and just goes through you. It was almost like something else was there. It wasn't like the person that you ended up, you know, that you knew. Because, like I said, he was a very kind individual and totally changed and totally affected him. When I started looking into the house, 
As I said, I always felt there was something hidden about the house. I just thought it was very strange because when I looked at the original plans of the house, it had this huge room underneath the kitchen. Like you could see the original plans. By the time we got it, it was only a small section of that room. So the section that existed really, it was only like maybe a couple feet. But the, the one on the original plans was about, I would say probably about six feet, eight feet. And I had this feeling that there was something under there. Budapest was, uh, during the Second World War, its Jewish population was very huge. And uh, basically we all know what happened during that time period. There was a lot of secret rooms that were created in order to protect, hide, etc. My belief was that if this was a, a person that had owned this, that was of Jewish origins, he may have created. I always believed that there was, I could sense there was something there. There was almost something prompting me that I had to try to get in there. They even had the workers, when they were working down there, try to get into the brick and see if there's something behind it. But as they tried to get through, you know, this cement part, it was a solid wall. To this day, I still feel that there's an entranceway somewhere that we couldn't access and that you can get in there and there's something there. And whatever's there, I've always had the idea that because of who owned the house, that maybe it was a secret room and maybe someone was trapped in there, who knows? And maybe that's why the things were happening, but something definitely is, uh, it's got to be connected to that. But I never found, I never found anything. So if it exists, it's still hidden. As I said, my husband would not believe in this. He still doesn't believe it, even though that I've heard recently that still things are, he still lives in the house and things happen and um, he's not thinking anything of it. The last time I saw him, which was about two years ago, he'd become very old. All of a sudden, it's almost like he had aged overnight and like he had turned all white and He's sort of like hunched back and it, the face shows the age and I'm going, that, that's very unusual. You think it's a hard life and that, but when you start thinking, it's almost like, is it possible that there is something that sort of takes over you? But he still is not believing that there is something there. But I'm feeling that whatever's in the house, it's becoming stronger and stronger and stronger. And it seems like it gets rid of people, like it doesn't want anyone to stay in the house. Lee says her husband had a bizarre personality change. Scott's girlfriend had a bizarre physical reaction. Both believe it was due to evil ghostly possessions. Our experts agree it takes a compliant personality to react so strongly to the influence of evil spirits. Nonetheless, Dr. David Reed believes we can resist their influence. But like an addict, the person possessed needs the support and guidance of others to give him the strength to return to a normal existence. It's too late for Scott and Lee's. Like the partners of alcoholics, they are both the collateral damage of a force that somehow got out of control. All they can do is move forward with their lives and away from the horrifying events that ended their relationships. Because I couldn't live my whole life um, alone because of the house. And although it was a beautiful mansion, that was not, you know, that wasn't part of my story. I didn't want that to be something that I had to live with forever. I certainly wouldn't have wanted to die in the place. Even when I go back to Budapest or wherever I travel in the world, you can feel I can, I'm much more susceptible to uh, the things around me. I can feel things and I, I know that it exists or I can see things. So did it happen from there? Possibly. I'm not sure. Maybe it's just a part of your life or a point in your life that you become more open to it.